Hello, I'm Michael for GameWatch.com and today we're going to be previewing Endless Space 2, a new 4x strategy game currently in Steam's early access program in development by Amplitude Studios. One of the major issues that many sci-fi 4x games get completely wrong is the implementation of other world races. Often each race plays the exact same, with the only real difference being an aesthetical one. Endless Space 2 looks to change that, with each faction not only playing differently, but incorporating the cultural differences of the alien races into the core mechanics themselves. The current early access build contains a few factions to choose from. Of these, the most unique are the Voyjani, a race of beings who are contained within suits that help them survive after the near destruction of their race. They remind me a lot of the Quarian race from the Mass Effect series, which also happened to be one of the more interesting cultures of that franchise. Similar to the Quarians, the Voyjani are a nomad race who have left their world behind and now survive on giant ships known as arcs. These arcs play the role of colonies when in star systems. Other races must colonize planets individually and set up facilities, whereas the Voyjani are only housed in mobile colonies that can accumulate resources from an entire star system with just the one arc. In terms of core mechanics, Endless Space 2 works exactly the same as the original. You start with a single system and as you grow you're able to produce more ships and eventually expand your empire. Researching technology has always been a pillar of the 4x genre, and in this game it works exactly as you would expect it to. Each race has a technology tree that spans several tiers, which denotes the technological age. Each tier consists of subtrees that are divided into categories, such as weapons or economics, and you can research them at your will. Now, you're only able to research one technology at a time, but you can queue up several so that once one finishes, the others will automatically start researching after that. Some factions, of course, will be research inclined and will be able to research technology much faster than others. The Voyjani, for example, can collect the resources of an entire system with one arc, but their production and research pace is slowed comparatively. The diplomacy system as it stands needs a lot of work. Now, like most diplomacy systems in the genre, the game has the basics down, but at this point, it really struggles to flesh out its ideas and lacks anything interesting or unique. The redeeming feature of diplomacy, however, is in the minor factions, who can be allied with for a multitude of bonuses. These sub-factions are usually the native inhabitants of certain worlds, and each have their own unique culture. The implementation of narrative is something that really impressed me in Endless Space 2. Each faction has a story-specific quest line that you can complete in a non-linear fashion, and there are a multitude of quests to complete. These quests not only provide rewards like resources, but they also help to expand the lore and narrative of your faction of choice. On top of this, your faction also has hero units who can be assigned a governorship over a certain planet or they can be attached to fleets for various combat bonuses and then you also have the political system so the way you play and depending on what faction you play the populace of that faction will like certain playstyles and be against others and depending on how you play it may have political ramifications for you and thus you may get voted out of office now while the forex strategy side of the game is shaped up really really nicely the combat is a bit of a letdown the combat in original endless space was extremely hands-off and sadly this has transferred into its sequel the space battles look great but that's all they do because you only watch before an engagement takes place you're able to choose a battle plan which is simply a selection from three things long range medium range or short range the effectiveness of battle plans you select depends on the ships in your fleet and, of course, the enemy fleet makeup. This can lead to feeling like you have to specialise your fleets into ranges, which naturally increases the success rate of the battle plan. So, for example, you want a short range fleet for a short range battle plan, and thus that will give you an effectiveness rating a much needed boost. This, however, leaves you open to hard counters to enemy fleets so if your short range fleet goes up against a long range fleet it is likely that that fleet will be completely destroyed now while the combat is fun to watch it does become boring with absolutely no hands-on action it becomes the norm fairly quickly to auto-resolve battles, and I've always said that some 
good RTS combat in endless space or maybe some turn-based combat would take the game up to a completely different level. Once again, however, combat holds an otherwise great strategy game back in a big way. In terms of graphics, Endless Space retains its great visuals with a few marked improvements. The overall feel that the game's smooth transitions, assets and overall aesthetical choice provides is something that very few games have actually achieved. The whole game looks and sounds fantastic, which really helps you pull you into making that five hours feel like five minutes. Overall, in its current early access state, Endless Space 2 is shaping up to be a great sci-fi strategy and could potentially be packed with full of narrative and charm. The core mechanics of the game have a really good solid foundation that is only really ever let down by the hands-off combat. Fans of the genre and fans of the previous game will be able to settle in nicely and they will find that the focus on quests and hero units has a nice touch to it with the already established mechanics. Now the full game will feature a host more features, races, units and will, that will only serve to add more replayability, longevity and variety to the overall gameplay. Now the developers have stated that they estimate the game to be in early access from around four to six months depending on the feedback but they have said that it could be more depending on what happens. So that is our preview of Endless Space 2. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Head on over to GameWatch.com for more information on Endless Space 2 and I will see you next time.